Sophie. Welcome to the transcript. This week, the transcript looks into the dangers of automated robots, celebrates Pride Week at NHS, and talks to the track and field team on Hamda. In Russia, on a brightly lit firing range, a fully autonomous robot armed with two Glock semi-auto pistols shot about 50 feet downrange with deadly accuracy. Is this the rise of the machines? As our lives become more and more integrated with artificial intelligence and automation, everyday tasks are being taken over by robots or machines. While it is useful to have these machines doing time-consuming tasks for us, they force us to relinquish a level of control that could keep us safe. In fact, this is already happening. Automated fitness training robots that guide you through basic exercises exist. And LG and Samsung has already been offering smart fridges for years, not just food and exercise tech is becoming popular. We have been using pacers forever. They are crucial to life and they have already been hacked, causing people to die. For example, this is just theoretical. Picture your automated car stops you from going downtown for GoBerry because it's not in your computer-generated diet plan. Or when you call 911, a police robot appears to deal with your problem or emergency. But what happens when a manufacturer like Samsung makes a mistake and robots all over the world start to break. That has already happened, <clears throat> note seven. But seriously, picture it, an error causing a gun-toting police robot to go haywire inside of your house, destroying your property and maybe even your life. But it's about time that you learn to float on your own Cause I know that you can uh, My name is Emily Woodland, I'm a senior. For my capstone project, I was originally going to record a little EP of a few songs that I wrote in songwriting last year. Um, but then I decided to switch it to just doing a full-length performance instead because I've been trying to make myself perform out more and I thought it would be a good opportunity to push myself a little bit. I love that it's really self-directed. Um, it all feels really valid. Um, and I feel like I learned a lot about not only like music and writing um, but also like time management which is definitely a skill that's worth developing. It was a good way to push myself to really start doing my own thing and taking charge because in the past like I've played guitar and sang for a long time but 
I've only done a few open mics because I'm a little bit shy about it. And it was a great way to really step out of my comfort zone and take charge because you got to be able to perform. Yeah. But it's about time, oh, it's about time that you learn to float on your own, cause I know that you can. Hi, I'm Connor McClendon, and welcome to this promposal. And also Hamped Up. Y'all ready for this? This week, I talked to NHS seniors Nick Smith and Gretchen Savison about running for the track and field team. All right, so your relay team achieved All-American status in indoors. Uh, this past weekend, you set a meet record. How much fun is it to be a part of this group? It's kind of amazing where we've come from, considering my freshman year, really, uh, this is the first time being introduced to track, and then having this amount of success in my senior year is really gratifying. So you've had wins this season in sprints, in hurdles, and even in the long jump. Uh, is it ever challenging to stay successful in so many different events? <laughs> It's kind of difficult. I I mainly train as a runner. Like I do all the running workouts, and then um, like hurdles and long jump are kind of things I'll do more for fun after practice. Um, but I'm starting to take hurdles more seriously, so um, I've been devoting a lot more time to that recently. Uh, so your coach Brandon Palmer, he's been very popular since he's come to the high school. Uh, but how has he helped you personally develop uh, throughout your career at the high school? He's a like college level coach. He's got so much experience. He really knows what to do. He has, uh, I mean, he has the experience of winning the state title himself as an athlete. I just can't really give him enough praise. He's really helped me as an athlete, just all together. So you're going to continue your track career in college. You're going to Boston University next year. Uh, what did you like about that program? The whole group of the sprinters in particular, they were just really tight-knit. When I did my overnight there, they were all hanging out, like 20 of them in a dorm. They're watching like uh, Disney movies, you're watching The Incredibles. And so it kind of just got that kind of fun vibe and really enjoyed my time there. They seemed really cool. And I wanted to be a part of a group that was just really close to each other. And finally, uh, your, this is obviously your spring season of your senior year, so your high school track career is coming to a close. What are you going to miss most about being a part of this program? Um, definitely being a part of such like a wonderful group of people. Um, I think there's kind of like a special bond that forms when you're like running through like really hard workouts every day with um, people, and I'm going to miss them a lot. Um, I think I'm going to miss mostly uh, seeing the, my teammates now develop because we have a lot of uh, really talented guys right now, underclassmen, Ben Gordon Sniffin, Cole Valley, because they're really talented as is, and I'm going to miss uh, the opportunity of being teammates with them when they get even better. Hey, great. Thanks so much for being on Hamped Up. No problem. <laughs> In other sports news, the baseball team is off to a 10-3 start, but the team suffered a tough loss against West Springfield on Wednesday as Terriers pitcher Nick Domkowski pitched a perfect game against the Blue Devils. The softball team is 12-2, and senior Zoe driscoll Spar recorded the 100th hit of her career this past Tuesday in the team's win over East Longmeadow. The boys lacrosse team has lost four games in a row, but the team still remains in first place in their league. The girls lacrosse team is off to a great start, but the team remains in the bottom half of their league, which features a number of good teams. They will look to climb in the standings in the coming weeks. The boys tennis team is in the midst of a losing streak and will look to turn things around with a home match against Minichog this afternoon. The girls tennis team, meanwhile, snapped a six-game losing streak on Monday with a dominant 4-1 win over Holyoke. Finally, the girls ultimate frisbee team took third place in the Four Rivers tournament this past weekend, winning three out of their four games. They will be competing in the Amherst Invitational this weekend. The annual Pride Parade is one of Northampton's biggest attractions. So let's take a look at the history of Pride in our town. The first Pride Parade was held in 1981 to counteract the large amount of discrimination facing members of the LGBTQ community in our country. Since 1981, the parades have only grown in size and extravagance. This past year's Pride amassed roughly 35,000 individuals to the Northampton area and was a huge success. But what really makes the Pride Parade so successful is the positive community and culture of absolute acceptance. Now more than ever is a time to support and celebrate our diverse community. Many people worry about the future of LGBTQ rights and acceptance under our newest presidential administration. And globally, the LGBTQ community is still under serious discrimination, especially highlighted in Chechnya, where gay men are currently being kidnapped and tortured because of their sexuality. 
despite the overwhelming opposition to this community, LGBTQ plus individuals prove their strength on a daily basis. We are very lucky to be part of a town that takes pride in that strength. Thanks for watching. Come to our improv show tonight, 6 to 7.30 at Click Workspace. We have additions June 1st in the Black Box, 5.30 to 7. And the Senior Show, June 8th at 7.30 in the Black Box. There are only a few more episodes of the transcript this season, so make sure to catch up on this year's highlights on nhstechnology.org. <laughs>